Honorable Professors, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, on behalf of UNESCO World Heritage Center, allow me to extend my sincere greeting to the participants and organizers of the Social Summit. I wish to express my congratulations to Panthera, Oxford University's Wildlife Conservation Research Unit, and especially Professor David McDonald for launching this innovative initiative. UNESCO appreciates your kind invitation to join in this dialogue about wildlife conservation. You have selected a very timely topic, new approaches to lion conservation. Here at UNESCO, we recognize lions as a keystone species, a natural indicator of the health of an ecosystem. The threatened statues of African lions reflect the alarming conservation and socioeconomic situation in many parts of the continent. As the sole specialized agency within the United Nations system, with a specific mandate in the fields of education, science, and culture, UNESCO works around the globe to promote biodiversity and cultural diversity in the service of mutual understanding and peace. As you may know, UNESCO is not a funding agency. Rather, its strength lies in its role as platform for international cooperation and awareness raising and a standard setter for international norms in its fields of competence. As regards to the safeguarding of our planet's natural resources, we work closely with governments and civil society to address contemporary threats such as environmental degradation, climate change, deforestation, declining population and endangered species, poaching and illicit trafficking of flora and fauna as well. Moreover, we encourage decision makers to adopt human-centered and effective strategies and policy in line with the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. In doing so, we also stress the importance of actively engaging with local communities, including indigenous people, to ensure ownership and sustainability. This was a major impetus behind the proclamation by UNESCO General Conference of 5th May as Africa War Heritage Day, which has been celebrated started this year and onward. To support member states in the essential task of assessing and managing the Earth resources, UNESCO has created programs, activities, and international legal instruments that recognize the global importance of natural heritage. I would like to briefly elaborate on three of these in 1971, UNESCO established the Man and the Biosphere Program, known as MAB, to explore local solutions to global challenges to bio biodiversity. It were World Network of Biosphere Reserves currently comprised of 669 sites in 120 countries, including 60 transboundary sites, some 25 uh, biosphere reserve in sub-Saharan countries, both major lion habitats, namely Cameroon, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Gabon, Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, and South Africa. MAP's strategic objectives are ambitious. Conserve biodiversity, foster the sustainable use of natural resources, contribute to building equitable societies in harmony with the biosphere facilitate education for sustainable development, and support adaptation to climate change. Let me now turn to UNESCO's most successful international legal instrument for the conservation of heritage sites, the Convention Concerning the Protection of the World Cultural and Natural Heritage, more commonly known as the World Heritage Convention. Adopted in 1972, just one year after the creation of MAB, the con Convention is based on the fundamental notion that natural and cultural heritage are interrelated and interdependent. To date, this legal binding international treaty has been ratified by 192 countries. Its famous World Heritage List contains 1,052 World Heritage properties inscribed for their outstanding universal value. As of last July, the list included 203 natural sites, 35 mixed natural and cultural sites, together with the International Union for Conservation of Nature, IUCN, UNESCO addresses land conservation issues in several of these properties, such as Serengeti National Park in Tanzania and the Great Rift Valley in Kenya. The Convention's lesser known list of world heritage in danger is designed to raise international awareness to threats of affecting, affecting certain properties with a view to prompting appropriate corrective measures. At present, 18 natural sites are danger listed, 
13 of them in Africa. Lastly, I would like to mention the COMPAC, the Community Management of Protected Areas for Conservation Initiative. This innovative program, which is the third, aims to improve conservation at natural world heritage properties in Africa by encouraging direct community involvement. Under this initiative, local communities have been engaged to enhance visitors' understanding and appreciation for wild and other natural resources, thereby resulting in an increase sense of ownership as well as direct economic benefit. In closing, I would like to reiterate once again UNESCO firm commitment to continue mobilizing the international community and working with partners worldwide to protect our planet's precious diversity. I trust that the exchange that will take place during this Cecil summit will be fruitful and stimulating and we look forward to the outcomes of your deliberation. Thank you for your attention.